The retail combination is something that is fairly, it, it, from what I see, it's, it's quite a UK thing. Like we, we had uh, JJB originally, um, DW, uh, Mike Ashley with what they're doing with, um, with, Ever, with the Everlast brand. I'm just curious to know, because it seems like when, when you, and I, and I remember going back years ago when I looked, thought the model, you kind of had your, your retail, which I believe was downstairs. Was it downstairs or upstairs? Yeah, um, Often in, the, in JJB because the swimming pool was downstairs. Right, okay. So, so you kind of had the, the club, then you had the retail. And it, and it seemed as though now, in fact, I was at an event yesterday where there was a credit card company and, and they were giving away all this free stuff so that they could um, get the details of people that are interested in health and fitness because it was a very targeted demographic and that data was worth a lot of money for people. So I guess what you were doing is, is creating almost like this targeted audience who are interested in the brand and... And, and would be interested in a lot of the stuff that was that was being sold. So I, I guess I'm curious in terms of that that model itself, because I, I know in, in terms of the JJB, it, it, it didn't quite continue as, as um, it, it, it didn't continue and they're, and they're not here today. But do, do you think that that is a mod, you know, obviously it's part of what you guys do, but, but you know, why do you think there's probably not more of those collaborations between fashion brands and, and gyms or, or just traditional retail and gym? You know, why isn't Nike in the gym business um, or Puma or anyone like that? What, what are your thoughts on that? I think I think it's a difficult question to ask uh, to answer as to as to why other people aren't. I think I think the reason why the three main retailers across the last twenty years, sports retailers in the UK, are uh, because of the pioneering things that happened at JJB. I think that I think that had that not happened, I'm not so sure it would have happened at Sports Direct, and and would it have happened at JD? I think it spawned it in the UK. But it, but if you know, yes, the cross fertilization element of it is 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 important. But it's never been the key in, in both of the sports retailers that I've worked with. Um, the two businesses fundamentally stand on the stand on their own two feet. You know, so when you're in a, a unit where there's a gym and a, and a retail store, it isn't about the the gym going in there to support spending retail. That that's a nice extra nice to have. But fundamentally, it's probably more to do with with sweating the property asset. Most sports stores at that point would be double height and and. And the business that I used to work for instantly thought, you know what, how can we fill this huge void above us? Put a floor in here, what can we do? Well, we don't need more retail space because we've already got it because we need that all on one floor because that's the way the shopping experience needs to look. I know, we've, we've got a gym down the road that seems to be doing pretty well and it seems like it's bringing the same people in. Let's see how that goes. And and, and at the time, I think that that, that, ran, that ran really well. Um, and I think it spawned... It's spawned the work that, that's gone on at, at, at Sports Direct and, and to a lesser degree, I think, for us, because we do it slightly differently at JD. We actually, out of the 75 units, only have one combined unit with JD. So so, so the JD Gyms business is, is very much a standalone business. This is a very different model. We don't take the same property. We've got one in, in Salford. In fact, it's just outside of Manchester. Uh, and that was that, that fundamentally was a property that JD fancied. They had excess space. And I said, OK, I'll... I'll I'll pick up the slack and I'll come in there with you. But it's, but it's, you know, this is where it works together. We'll do it. But it's never about the, the key cross fertilization story. And I think, to be honest with you, that's probably going to become going to become even more relevant as more and more people buy online. So, so what we will be looking to do is introduce kiosks into the gyms where people can uh, shop the product. They can have a look at it. They can they can order order things in. And we're looking at. Um, a, a pilot where we're putting some lockers inside the gyms so people can order the product and pick it up the following day. I think that's probably going to be more relevant for us than it is the the typical kind of dual fascia in the same in the same premises. And that's largely to do with the fact that for us, typically in gyms, what you'll find is that the rent profile is is a little lower than it would be on the prime retail. You know, JD is 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 the world's number one uh, sports fashion retailer. And we'll typically go for prime pitch that is that is very retail driven. For a leisure business to go into that space and be competitive is difficult because typically what you're doing is you're paying you're paying extra for the retail benefit of those people that are shopping at Primark or at Boots or at JD. When in reality that can be more of a nuisance than if you've got a standalone unit that's cheaper rent somewhere else that people are just going for the leisure destination. So so the rent profile I think is probably a key reason why. 
you wouldn't necessarily do it because what works for Nike or Puma or JD from an A1 prime retail location is, is probably pretty expensive by the time it gets to it. So you're then into something that is purely there to feed the to feed the retail element as opposed to stand on its own on its own two feet. So that that I would think is probably the primary reason. And how does that? How does it, the brand work? <clears throat> you know, does it? Do you think it? Um, it sort of really, I suppose, um, enhances what is happening at retail, even if it's separate. You know, the fact that you you're now sort of the market leaders, I guess, um, in fitness itself. Do, do, do you think there's there's crossovers into what's happening with the with the other side of the JD business at all? Yeah, definitely. Well, I certainly like to think so. You know, there's no question that we that we have tailored the design of the JD gyms to ensure that the that the consumer understands that it that it all tells you know part of the same story. I think that's really really important to us. When when the chairman Peter Cowgill and myself first started to talk about the idea of, of, of a gyms business, it was only very late in the day that we decided to call it JD Gyms. At one point, this was about JD investing in a business that didn't actually carry the fascia. The, the business is so successful and the brand is so strong. It, it's, it's a pretty big call for, for me to be able to look after a business with the JD brand on it. You know, so there had to be a lot of trust that it was going to work. When you've built something up over at that stage, 35 years, it, it's, it wasn't an easy sell for me to say, no, I think this is going to be better as JD. And, and the promise that I gave to the board at that point is that whilst I, you know, it's got to still um be a be a business that works and is profitable in its own right i will a definitely not tarnish the mother brand but b genuinely believe that i'll do something that will really enhance it and 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 that's where i feel we are now when we had seven or eight gyms you can't you know most people in most parts of the uk never heard of jd gyms and to a point in certain parts of the uk that's still the case but the more and more that goes the more and more we're, we're targeting the same consumer and actually, you know, creating the arenas, I suppose, in which you can use some of the products. So, mm. so yeah, I think there's there's no question about it now. It's it, it is it is definitely brand enhancing. But but the flip side of that is it's been an incredible um, element of, of helping me make JD Gyms a success because the strength of the brand just gives a great trust and credibility. You know, at times when I'm when I'm pre-selling in an area where someone's perhaps never heard of it before as soon as you as soon as they understand that it's jd gyms they've got the trust they'll join the gym two or three months in advance because they know it's going to be of a certain quality